Maca's guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maca here, and today we're playing a brand new game on Game Pass. That game is called Maquette. This game has been available on PlayStation for quite a few years already, and you may notice the length of the video. It is on the shorter end, and the game is on the easier end for what is available in Game Pass. Just keep in mind that this game does involve some speed runs, which is why the video is so short. It's also a puzzle game, so naturally playing it would result in a much longer experience normally. Even though you do need to get some speed runs done, they're pretty easy because we do have chapter select. We also have manual saves. You can pause the game and the timer does stop and you can skip all of the cutscenes. I would highly recommend going into the settings and seeing if you need to invert your controls, do so. Additionally, the default camera sensitivity is a little bit high so you can turn it down if you find that it's hard to control. So even though this video is probably around 40 minutes, you may take closer to an hour and a half to get your completion. Just let that be known. For this first level, it's super easy. You're just gonna walk and follow the path as shown in the video, and you will be introduced into some key mechanics, like using X to interact with switches, buttons, and items, and then using B to put those items down. You can also jump with A, and then we will have to rotate objects, but that happens more in level two. You'll notice that for the most part throughout this video, I'll have a timer going in the bottom right hand corner. So right now you can see it's around 40 seconds or so. And this is because each level involves a speed run for level one called the gardens. We have to complete it in under three minutes, which isn't really that hard to be honest, as this is mostly just walking along a path. If you're using this video, you may fall into one or two camps. You can try and play along with the video, although some may find that more difficult than others, or you can try to watch the video and then pause it and play the game in chunks, catching up to the video and then pausing your own game and catching up again. As a reminder, the reason that the speedruns are so easy is because you can just do manual saves whenever you feel comfortable with a section that you've completed. And then if you make a mistake, you can just reload that manual save and try again. So there isn't too much at risk. I would just recommend not overwriting a save with a save that has a mistake on it, for example. And if all else fails, you'll have to replay a chapter, which probably takes around five minutes. So again, not much at risk, even though these speedruns may seem challenging and very specific. There are a lot of tools that we can use in our favor to make them a lot easier. Now, I didn't give exact commentary on the path to follow for level one. I really do believe that just watching and playing alongside me for level one specifically is the easiest as you're mostly just following a path. You will eventually reach a key that you want to pick up. You can then arm that key with the B button, place it into the door. You'll have to pick it out of the door once the door opens and do that for the second door as well. And very importantly, once you walk forward, you will trigger your first cutscene in the game. And whenever there's a cutscene, I will tell you, but you want to hold the B button in order to skip it as cutscene time does count towards our level time. And if we are doing speed runs, we don't want that to happen. Luckily, if you followed along, I am 20 seconds ahead of our three minute pace to finish the first level. You'll know that you completed the speed run because the achievement will unlock, and if you didn't, that's fine. You can revisit the level through chapter select to try again or do the game in a second playthrough. Press any button to resume the game, and as soon as we spawn in the second level called the maquette, you want to pause the game and make a manual save just in case here, although chapter select will also work for us. I will put a timer on screen once we get started. Our goal is four minutes and 10 seconds, and I complete this level in around three minutes and 55 seconds. From the beginning, walk forward to the house in the background. Go across the little mini bridge, and this will trigger a cutscene. Hold B to skip it as quickly as possible. After skipping it, turn around and the dome will vanish the little walls around it. You can now head inside. Use the X button to pick up the red cube in the middle, move it and press B twice to drop it out of the path that it was blocking, turning right and then going through the little doorway. Once through the doorway, drop down into the hole, turning around and looking underneath the bridge you took. In here, press X to pick up the item, which is a bridge, and then press X on the elevator to take it up. 
Once the elevator reaches the top, move forward and into the dome. Here is a miniature version of everything we need to do. Press B to arm yourself with the bridge. Press the bumpers to rotate the bridge and use the triggers to zoom it in and out and then drop it once the bridge is aligned with the path we need to cross. Once it drops, go to the right and through the door using the bridge into the elevator on the other side, activating the button to start it and holding B to skip the cutscene. Then walk forward, grab the golden ticket, go onto the elevator in front of you, activating it to go down. And then what you wanna do is walk forward and drop the golden ticket into your path directly in front of you. Go into the miniature to find your golden ticket now shrunken down in size. Grab it and turn to the right to go through the little circus entrance, arming your ticket into the box to go through the door, skipping the cutscene once you walk forward. Once you regain control of your character, turn around and head through the door we used to enter, going towards the miniature, and you'll notice a switch inside of the miniature that you want to activate. This will open up a secret wall that we need to continue. Go through the little tents, navigating mostly to your right to reveal this new break in the wall. Go through there, and at the end of the path, you'll notice a blue little wooden object. Approaching it and skipping the cutscene will reveal a golden key with a ruby inside. Grab it and navigate back to the maquette, which is that dome with the miniatures, and we'll be using this key for the next series of things. As you enter the middle area, turn to the right, and then activate your key using the B button to place the key inside of the door and open it. Once you open the key, you want to immediately grab the key out of the door again, and then pause your game. I will be pausing my game with 2 minutes and 35 seconds played on this little section. Pause the game and make a manual save. You can use any save slot you're comfortable with. The reason we're doing this is because we're grabbing a miscellaneous achievement and we don't want to waste time on the speedrun. With this key in your hand, go back to the miniature and what you want to do is you want to jump into the miniature basically, put the key out in front of you and rotate it so that you can use it as a ramp in order to climb up onto this green kind of roof here. And again, this is a miscellaneous achievement for basically getting out of bounds. This isn't how we are completing the level. So if we can place this key, it has to be nice and straight and we're using it like a ramp up onto this green roof. If you do it correctly and then drop it and the key stays nice and straight like a ramp, we can then climb the ramp and jump out of the map to get the miscellaneous achievement called Breakout. So once you do that, jump out, wait for it to unlock. And once it does unlock, we can pause the game and then reload that last checkpoint. And we'll basically start off our playthrough back where we were at that 2 minute and 35 second mark I talked about earlier. So from where we made a manual save earlier, take the key and then go back towards the miniature to use the key as a bridge across this gap of white stone, dropping it, making sure it lands perfectly. If you make any major mistakes, just reload that checkpoint that we made. Then cross the bridge, going to the other side, skipping the cutscene once you reach the end, and then working your way back towards the miniature. Again, there may be another cutscene here, which you can hold B to try and skip, approaching the miniature now. As a general rule, taking things out of the miniature will shrink them, putting them in the miniature will make them bigger. So take the key and then take it out of the miniature, putting it in the path, going back into the miniature to now find a smaller key, arming that key and then putting it inside of the red door. I'm having a couple of alignment issues, but I'm sure you can figure it out. As soon as the door is opened, grab the key out of the door as we will need it, and then put it inside of the miniature in a place that you can grab it. Go and find the larger version of the key outside of the miniature and grab it, putting it back into the miniature to make it grow even larger, and then using it as a bridge to cross to that red door that we just opened. Once you get that alignment right, drop the key, go across the bridge and into the door in under 4 minutes and 10 seconds in order to unlock the achievement for the speedrun and for completing the level. Remember that if you're struggling to do the entire thing in one go in a speedrun style, you can just separate it into chunks, making a manual save every time you're happy with your result. We are then off to the third chapter called The Gateways, and our target time is 4 minutes and 35 seconds. 
I'll start the timer as soon as we spawn in, turn around 180 degrees, going through the door behind you to pick up the red gem, then take the gem back towards the center dome, pulling it out and making it interact with this larger gem to make the gate open up. Then jump through the miniature itself towards the red building, with the red gem in hand, you can walk through the door and drop it as soon as you enter. Go around the back, around the corner, up the steps, and then pull the lever. The lever will allow a blue gem to come down a ramp. You want to catch it and then put it outside in the back side of this red building. So catch it and then quickly put it outside of the red building out back. Then go through the building, take the red gem, hopping back out the front and into the miniature. Drop the red gem in front of you and grab the miniature version in order to make it a red marble. Take the red marble to the back of the blue building and put it on the ramp and then take the miniature blue crystal and use it to enter the blue house through the first door and touching the second door to make the red gem fall down. Drop the blue crystal. We don't need it anymore. Grab the red and go through the red door, interacting with the gate here and skipping the cutscene if possible. Place the red gem and the new green gem right out front and feel free to pause your game and make a manual save if you think you did this pretty quick. You now want to head into the miniature, grab the miniature red gem and put it inside of the balcony of the miniature green house. This will allow you to then grab the miniature green gem, go close to the greenhouse balcony and the red gem will fall through. Take your green gem and head towards the greenhouse through the front gate, through the front door, and then put the green gem through the hole in the fence to drop it into the garden before entering the house. Another decent chance to make a manual save here. I did complete this level with about 20 seconds to spare, but two minutes is a decent amount of time to get to here and a good way to set yourself up for success. Afterwards, grab the red gem and put it into the staircase. Grab the key and put the key through the hole in the wall, dropping it outside. Head back into the center of the house to open the door with the lever. Grab the red gem and then put it outside right near the entrance. Grab the green gem that we put in the garden earlier. You can then use this to exit through the front door back into the miniature version. You will notice a miniature key right in front of you. Grab that key and you can take it to the miniature version of the sand colored house in order to unlock the front door. Another chance to make a manual save if you feel very comfortable with your last little segment. But from here, what we want to do is grab the miniature version of the red gem and place it into the sand colored house from the outside. There's a small hole, place it through the hole to drop it in. At this point, what you want to do is you want to grab the full sized green gem, which is kind of small and use that to go towards the sand house. Go to the left of the staircase as you enter and then through the front door. Drop the green gem, we no longer need it. Pick up the red gem and go through the next door, skipping the cutscene once you enter. After you skip the cutscene, open the door with the lever, another cutscene, make sure you skip it. Walk down the bridge, drop down the bridge to the center of the area. When the walls appear, go back and to the center of this bridge, making a jump across a gap that can be a little bit difficult to get on your first try, but will let you kind of go a little bit outside of the map. Here, if you go towards the backside of the sand house, you'll find a large red gem. Use your red gem to make it disappear and then jump back up the staircase. And here you'll want to pause the game and make a manual save. Feel free to ditch the red gem. We don't actually need it anymore. The manual save is because there is a missable uh, trophy slash achievement, which we'll grab out of the way before actually completing our speed run. While we're out here, go towards the large green house. You'll notice a small crack in the fence line, which you can now get through because we are super small comparative to it. And here there is a little dog slash cat house outside. Go inside and find all these little pictures of the pets. And here you'll get a 75 gamer score achievement, which you can then pause the game and load back our manual save to continue with our speed run. And the clock will appear on screen once we respawn. Drop the red gem and go directly forward in front of you. There will be a series of two elevators here with switches. 
So get the first one here, which I almost missed. Get up onto the elevator, pull the trigger to end up on the uh, main floor here. Go towards the sandcastle area. Now you can grab a cog, put the cog into the miniature version, and I've completed it with about 25 seconds to spare. There's a little bit of a cutscene, so hold the B button here to make sure you skip through it as fast as possible. If done correctly, you will get the speedrun achievement for the gateways. Moving on to the next level called The Wedge. The necessary speedrun timer for The Wedge is 9 minutes and 50 seconds, almost a full 10 minutes. Luckily for us, this mission is very basic, super simple, and we're going to do it in about eight minutes, so almost two minutes to spare. And as always, if you are having trouble, you can really use that manual save slot as much as you need. As soon as we spawn, turn to your left, head towards the pink house, through the door, through the back door, out the backyard, into the elevator, pull the lever, and then you'll end up in a world where it is the same, but everything is much much larger you you are now the miniature as you approach the pink building but the gigantic one now you want to approach the rake directly in front of you use that rake to get up onto the fence use the fence to get up onto the kind of railing and then jump from the railing onto the stairs you'll then have to use the potted plants and the rocks on the stairs in order to navigate your way up and once you get into the house itself you should notice a green miniature house which is now the correct size if you go inside of this house there is a quick cutscene which I would recommend skipping just to be safe and then you can pick up the staircase and now retrace your steps back for the next minute or so by going directly forward back towards the dome up the ladder and then into the middle of the maquette or the diorama As we go through the pink house and end up at the diorama, feel free to use your manual save. I won't be, but we're going to be placing the staircase next to the kind of green wooded area inside of the miniature in order to make a ramp that will allow us to go and jump over the break in the fence. Go to the house in front of you on the right hand side and go inside to pull the lever. This will start a cutscene which was unskippable for me. Once this completes, you're going to want to head back to the diorama and then interact with the staircase we use to hop over the fence and place this staircase in the diorama to line up with the house on the left hand side that has the fence around it. After you do this, just place it down and then head forward into that area we were just in. Go into the house directly in front of you in the middle to pull the lever, opening the gate in the back of the area to head deeper into the larger version of all of this. Another unskippable cutscene here, unfortunately, but it doesn't add too much time. And then you can go forward through this newly opened wall, jump over the steps just to save a few seconds, and then start walking towards the house on the left. Here's another decent time. You may want to pull a manual save if you want to be safe and you are very comfortable with how fast you did the last minute or two. Then what you want to do is head under the fence and then go up the ramp and into the house. There will be a platforming section here, which if you do fail will add a lot of time. Again, not a bad idea to have a manual save. As you approach these pipes, it will start a cutscene, which we will skip. And then you want to jump up onto the pipes and use them to navigate up onto the chair. Once on the chair, there is a kind of valve that we can pull and we want to pull that valve and then skip the cutscene, drop down off the chair, and here I'm going to pull my first manual save personally. After climbing up the pipes and activating the switch, we want to just navigate backwards to where we started at the diorama by following the same line we used to get here for the next 45 seconds or so.
Now, as we approach the miniature, our goal here is to make the staircase much larger. The easiest way to do this, and the only way to do this, is to interact with the staircase that we put in front of the house, and then put it in an area we can easily access it, just in front of us, and then grab the now large staircase and bring it back towards the miniatures. Use this much larger staircase in order to make a ramp that leads into this area that we weren't able to access before with the kind of yellow haunted houses. If you approach them and look to the right hand side, you'll notice an elevator. We can take that elevator down to then approach the ramp, go up the ramp and jump into this area that was previously inaccessible to us. Once inside here, go to the far building in order to interact with the lever. This should open up a gate for us, which is very important as we will need to do a couple things here. After this unskippable cutscene, head back towards the diorama and interact with the staircase and bring it with you towards the area and put it sideways right in front of this house. It must be sideways as shown here and then drop it down and make sure it's pushed up against the wall pretty decently. Then move forward and into the house in the back to activate another lever. This will open up the wall in the back, which will allow you to go into the much larger version of the same thing. So do that by heading forward, jumping down the stairs. And what we want to do is now approach the kind of haunted house on the right hand side where we placed the sideways staircase. You'll figure out why we needed it to be sideways in a second here. But as you approach it, keep your eyes peeled for the left hand side. There is a small break in the staircase, which we can use to jump through and end up on a ledge. We can then use that ledge to end up on the railing, and then we can climb the railing in order to actually get into the house, which we wouldn't have been able to previously. Once here, you can find a small hole in the wall where there's a mousetrap. Skip the cutscene and grab the key inside of the mousetrap. With the key, now head backwards towards our original center point, where along this path, you can feel free to make a manual save if you feel as though you are doing a good job in terms of your timing. There aren't many actions left to do, but they can be a little bit finicky, so I would highly recommend a manual save at some point in the next couple of seconds. Upon reaching the center point, go to the right hand side and you'll notice the kind of church. Use your key on the front door of the church. For some reason, I had some really big trouble getting the key inside of the hole. Uh, but once you do successfully do that, it will open up the door. This is where I'm going to pause and make a manual save because I found that the last step to complete this chapter is a little weird and doesn't always work how you want it. So I'm going to open the door and then pause and just make a manual save as a just in case. The next step is very important and you must try to go into the church. As you go into the church, there will start a cutscene which we can skip and we will hear a church bell ring. At this point, we can now go back to the kind of haunted house, grab the staircase, go into the center diorama and use the ramp to lead up to the church bell inside of the miniature again this part can be finicky if you don't place it right but once you do you can go up the ramp and then ring the church bell and this should complete the chapter unlocking the achievement for completing it and hopefully the one for completing its speed run you don't see them show up on screen but i will prove that i have them by showing you my achievements here for some reason they didn't show up when they came unlocked the next level is called The Escape, one of the easiest levels in the game other than maybe the very first level. We are given 4 minutes and 20 seconds to complete our speed run, and I'm going to do it in 3 minutes and 40 seconds, so basically 40 seconds extra left over. There are very few puzzles here to do, if any. There's a little bit of a maze at the end, uh, but for the first half of this level, you're just going to follow the main path and it's really hard to make any mistakes. Uh, about halfway through, I'm also gonna recommend that you use a manual save just to not have to repeat the first half of this uh, chapter if you do make any mistakes, as it's possible to make a mistake a little bit later on 
But uh, this level is very, very easy. There's also no kind of like miscellaneous achievement or trophy. We're just trying to beat it in under four minutes and 20 seconds, which is extremely easy. This is a little bit of an important skip. Once you do reach the elevator and interact with the lever, make sure you hold B to skip the cutscene. That'll save you a couple of seconds. And then as you walk forward, keep an eye to your left and you'll notice the red gem. If you're gonna make a save, I would recommend doing it here about the halfway mark through the level. I'll even let my timer keep running to prove how easy the speed run is. With this red gem, you can then take it and you're basically following the yellow flex on the ground through the path to complete the maze. At the beginning, you're just gonna go through a false wall and then follow the very obvious path until you end up reaching this ramp. Get to the top of the ramp and then drop down to reveal the uh, path forward. And if there are words, you typically wanna start walking towards those words. So here, after this corner, wor words will appear in front of you, continue towards them, you will have to go through a false wall here on your left. And then after you exit, take an immediate right to reveal the remainder of the path. Go to the end of this path and then take another left. This should reveal another ramp that you can go up before you drop down. And I believe there is one more fake wall here. As you approach the tree, turn left into the path and then follow the yellow markers on the ground through the wall and then this should basically take you through to the very end of the level. I believe at this point you can drop the red gem if you want, but I'm just gonna carry it with me all the way to the end of the chapter, which is the white light. Uh, the one after this is called the spiral, which is at, at least a, more difficult than this for sure. With those now unlocked, we're ready to try to tackle the spiral with a speed run time target of six minutes and 40 seconds. We're gonna get it done in about five minutes and 30 seconds, leaving an extra minute for us if we need it and we're feeling a little bit slower. At the very beginning, just run forward through the caves following the linear path. The path will then split left and right. We're going to quickly grab a missable achievement, and that's going to be just for jumping off the cliff directly in front of you. Just go off the edge, fly off the edge. Don't worry, you'll lose about five seconds. If you're worried, you can restart all the way from the beginning, but you're only going to get a five second penalty. And then go to the right and start following the path. You should get the Into the Darkness missable achievement to unlock while this happens and then just continue on your way up. I'll give you some notes about good moments to make manual saves if you want, and uh, it should be a pretty easy level overall. Lots of walking and only a couple of pretty simple puzzles. Once you reach this kind of first little gazebo, just start taking the bridge towards the next one. Inside of the next gazebo, you should find a lever, activate that lever, and it will form a bridge off to your left and then you can take this bridge to the next gazebo at the next gazebo you can activate the lever and two bridges will try to be formed only one of them will work and it's going to be the one to your right so go and use that now in this next area we are going to do a puzzle you can make a mistake so i would probably recommend just pausing your game and making a manual save right here 
Either way, go inside, pick up the bridge piece, stand to the left, rotate the bridge piece into position, which will automatically fit itself into the puzzle, then hop up the ledge and activate the lever on the right hand side furthest piece to generate the rest of the bridge. Now that you fixed the bridge and generated the last bridge, you can backtrack to that middle gazebo and take the next path into the next areas. You'll be running for about 30 to 40 seconds here in a straight line. Coming up around this corner is another excellent position to pause your game and make a manual save as we will be doing some puzzles and they are pretty easy to make a mistake with. Enter the next room and go to the right hand side picking up one of these pillars and you want to place these pillars to block the little lights inside of the puzzle at this exact angle. You also want to make sure that the pillar on the bottom is pretty low on the light as we will need to jump on it and it's going to be a little bit easier this way and then the last pi pillar will have to go at this angle and this is kind of the solution to the puzzle if you now head back into the room you should notice this kind of Z style staircase it can be a little bit finicky to get this right which is why I recommended a manual save if you didn't get it just revisit the save and then head to the next room turn to your left and then go into the next room again if you want to be comfortable, feel free to make another manual save as there's another puzzle here. Looking into the pit of the second room, grab the key and then move it over to the left. This will spawn another key. You want to then use this key as a ramp and make it go from the left of the hole into the center of the hole as a ramp. Revisiting the previous room to then use the ramp into this next pit to find the actual key we need to exit this puzzle. Grab this key and then go back into the room that was at the end of the hall using the key to unlock the door, feeling free to use another manual save if you feel as though you are making good progress. Here you will see me make that manual save I mentioned. There's one puzzle left. It's super easy but involves a jump that can be a little bit tricky and just sometimes doesn't work. Go down the hall and into the next room and start by going to the left to find a bit of a Tetris piece. It's at the end of the hall and down these stairs. So we still have a little bit more to go and plenty, plenty, plenty of time. We only have about a minute of the level left with two minutes of extra time. So go to the left and grab this Tetris piece and you're going to want to rotate it in a specific way and put it down in a specific way as follows. You want to make sure it matches my puzzle exactly. So you want to use this red piece so that the gate is in the bottom left corner. And then you want to grab the piece on the right and you want to put it in the right hand side puzzle in a way so that the uh, gate is kind of near the middle of the area. And if you do this, you should be able to exit out of the left hand side door, jump up, go across these newly planted platforms. And then there is a little bit of a sketchy long jump out to the end of the level. So be a little bit careful there. I almost didn't make it. And as you approach this crystal with over a minute left for our speed run, we are going to complete the level and there is only one level left. The last level is a little bit difficult, but generally speaking, the speed runs easy as they give you plenty of extra time. It is called the exchange and they give you five minutes and 25 seconds. We're gonna do it in under four minutes. This level's a little bit complicated as you're moving yourself when you're moving the maquette, so you'll have to keep that in mind, but from the beginning, grab it from the middle and move it a little bit to the left, placing it down nice and flat. You can then locate the big blue staircase on the outer edge to your left, climbing that staircase to the top to reveal a lever. Pull that lever and then you can skip a cutscene and drop down over the balcony edge back into the maquette. Feel free to make as many manual saves as you desire. 
You can then grab it again and you want to push it all the way to this back tower here and you'll want to locate the door to that tower to get inside and grab this kind of owl. After doing this, skip the cutscene and there will be another button in front of you. I'm going to pause my game and make a manual save here as there is a missable achievement right here. Pressing this button will start a timer and you have to reach the next door without the door closing on your first try. If you fail, reload the last checkpoint. Press the lever, go through the door, and go back into the dome. Then pick up the maquette and move it towards the next tower, which is a little bit forward and to the right. If you're fast enough, you'll hear a ticking, and you have to get through the door before the ticking stops and the door closes. Doing so will unlock the achievement for you, and once you're inside, you can interact with the crystal to start the next phase of the mission, and feel free to pause your game and make another save point if you want. As you exit, you should reveal a small tower, which we will now complete the puzzles within these towers. As you head back into the center dome, look to the left to reveal the tower, stand on the plate, and complete the puzzle. This one's pretty easy, starting from the bottom. We're going to go for butterfly, then I believe the orange one is a flower. The kind of purple one in the middle is a human, then do the gem, and at the top do the X to complete this tower. After this tower, turn around and there will be another one, and for this, the solution is a little bit more complicated. But starting from the bottom, you're going to want the person, then the red X, then the kind of orange flower, then the kind of green gem, and then the butterfly at the top. This will shoot you straight into a cutscene that I don't believe you can skip where it opens a tower door for you. So grab the maquette and move it towards that tower to get there more quickly. And if you drop it, you can now exit out that tower, go inside and find the next little hologram to interact with. This is the bell. From the bell, head back through the door towards the maquette. It will spawn a large rock in front of one of the last towers here. This is a really important part that I would highly recommend making a manual save once you reach the dome here, as this can be a little bit tricky to get perfect. You're trying to grab the maquette, place it on top of the rock so that it is perfectly slanted by the rock itself. This is important as it changes how the tower inside works. Once you do that and it's balanced perfectly on that rock, exit out and go up that tower, up the first set of stairs, up the second set of stairs towards the book. After grabbing the book, skip the cinematic and exit the door directly in front of you. We are basically almost done, reminding you that we actually have over 5 minutes and 25 seconds to complete this level. Grab the maquette, raise it nice and high above your head, moving it towards this now blue growing tree placing it down as close as possible. It sometimes gets stuck on the balcony and then moving towards that tree in the larger world to finish the game, completing it entirely. If done correctly, you'll have completed the game, completed the level, the exchange and done your final speed run, unlocking all of the available achievements, which there are 22 of for a thousand gamer score, hopefully pain free and in under an hour and a half. Thank you for watching, like the video, share the video with a friend, a super special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show, and hopefully I see you next time. Peace.